a deadly blast in a mosque in Peshawar, one of the bloodiest attacks in years, has led to multiple deaths and over 100 injured. As the rubble from the collapsed roof of the mosque located in the high security police lines area continues to be cleared, the death toll has now risen to 92. Peshawar Police Chief Muhammad Ajaz Khan said that more than 300 to 400 people had gathered in the mosque for prayers and 90% of the martyred were police personnel. The location of the mosque surrounded sensitive buildings and installations of law enforcement such as Capital City Police, Frontier Reserve Police, Elite Police Force, Counterterrorism Department, etc. Earlier in the day, the tehreek -e taliban Pakistan officials, Sarbakaf Maman and Umar Mukarram Khorasani, took responsibility for the attack, claiming that this was revenge for the killing of Umar Khalid Khorasani, a senior founding leader of the TDP last year. However, another spokesperson of TDP later denied the responsibility without commenting on the original claim of responsibility. Ever since the TDP unilaterally terminated the ceasefire with the Pakistani government and ordered its militants to carry out attacks in the entire country, the attacks on Pakistani security personnel have dramatically increased. A week ago, a police van narrowly escaped a bomb blast. Earlier on December 18th, detained TTP militants inside the Banu Counterterrorism Department took over the compound and held the interrogators hostage. With a demand to be provided a safe haven to Afghanistan as a bargaining chip. Last year, 2022, was one of the bloodiest years for Pakistan security, with terrorist organizations carrying out more than 350 attacks. At least 282 security personnel lost their lives, including 40 in December 2022. Pakistan has accused Afghanistan of providing TDP safe haven on its soil, which it uses to carry out attacks in Pakistan. Noor Wali Mahsood, leader of the TDP, stated in a CNN interview that the Pakistan Taliban expects support from Afghan Taliban in return for helping them push the US out of Afghanistan. However, when asked if they operate from within Afghanistan, he denied it. The Afghan Taliban also deny the use of its soil against Pakistan, which is seen with much skepticism by both Pakistan and the US. The Afghan Taliban had promised Pakistan and the United States that it would not allow a safe haven to terrorist outfits including the TTP, Al-Qaeda, and ISK in agreements made before the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The United States, which has enlisted TTP as a banned terrorist outfit, stated that it would provide unconditional support to Pakistan after the recent attacks by the terrorist outfit. Pakistan's National Security Committee on January 3rd vote to crush the terrorist elements, also raising concern about the use of foreign soil by non-state actors to attack Pakistan. With the terrorist attacks increasing, people are afraid that the wave of terrorism of the late 2000s and early 2010s will be back, causing families to live in constant fear. In all of this conundrum, Pakistan's already weak economy is likely to take a further hit. Between 2002 to 2014, Pakistan bore the brunt of terrorism with the direct and indirect costs amounting to 127 billion US dollars. If the wave strengthens, it would further exacerbate Pakistan's economic and political challenges, made worse by devastating floods and the issue of fiscal and trade deficits. I'm Osama Nizamani, and this was your Daily Dispatch.